Hello everyone, and welcome to the second installment of the Tenth Doctor Cosplay How-To Series. I'm Tenth Doctor Matt, and today we're going to be talking about the Christmas Invasion outfit. So yes, we're going to be talking about pajamas. So firstly, let me just start off by saying um, I'm very sorry that it's been a long time since I've put out a video, uh, but as you guys can imagine, I've been quite busy with um, some wedding preparation stuff. And um, as you can also probably hear from my voice, uh, after I was doing that for a while, uh, I actually got sick with quite a nasty sinus infection, so I've been kind of out of commission for the past week and a half or so with that. So, um, sorry it's been so long, but I'm very excited about this video, so let's jump right in and get started. Alright, so the Christmas Invasion pajama outfit, I think, um, is definitely a really cool variant of um, Tenth Doctor cosplay. It's one that I very, very rarely see, um, but I was sort of watching some older episodes and I thought that it would be really cool to put that costume together, and I also figured, well, you know, it's really just pajamas and a robe and some slippers. How hard could it possibly be to put that outfit together? But I was in for a bit of a surprise. Um, it's a little bit harder than you might think, but um, that's why I've sort of compiled a list of places where you can get this stuff so that it'll be easier for any of you who would like to do the costume as well. Um, also, I think it, this will be a really nice one to do for um, conventions and stuff. I mean, you figure normally a convention, you're there for three days, so um, you can you know have this as like one of your options for one of the days. It's gonna be super comfortable to wear and walk around and I feel like um, the people who notice you and realize that you're the Tenth Doctor are going to be really uh, sort of excited that you went with this variant. The only caveat is that I've heard some things from other cosplay blogs and, and things like that that um, when they were wearing this outfit a lot of people just thought that they were Arthur Dent from Hitchhiker's Guide, which is funny because the Doctor does mention that at the end of the episode, but um, I, I mean, really, if you look at Arthur Dent's outfit, it, it is similar. I mean, it's pajamas and a, and a dressing gown, but they're completely different colors. The, the patterns aren't the same, and so I feel like anybody who really knows Doctor Who is, is going to know that you're the Doctor. Anyway, that's it for my rant, so let's actually get started talking about the pieces of this costume. So, the first and most important part of this costume, obviously, are the PJs. Now. Um, this was actually also the most difficult part to find one that was like a close enough match. Um, I did do a bunch of research and I, the name is escaping me at the moment, but I did find the original uh, brand that, that made David's pajamas for the episode. They don't make that pattern anymore, but even if they did, you probably wouldn't want to buy it because I looked at their website and get ready for this. A set of pajamas, now we're talking about top and bottoms, so, you know, probably what you would find normally in the store for about 20 bucks or so. They're charging $800. So, unless you're Bruce Wayne and you have just money out the wazoo that you don't know what to do with, I don't think any one of us is going to be willing to spend $800 on a pair of pajamas, so that company can fuck right off. That being said, <laughs> there are um, a few pretty decent, uh, good enough look-alikes out there. I found my set on eBay. Um, mine, I don't know how uh, available these might be anymore. The brand is Christopher Hayes, as you might be able to see there. Um, the Christopher Hayes brand was apparently an old store brand from the Macy's uh, store. I, I don't think that they sell them anymore. When I got these, they were still brand new in the packaging, but it looked like it was from years ago. I mean, the, the price tag was like yellowed just from over time, so I have no idea what year these may have been from, but apparently they're pretty old. However, uh, the nice thing was I found these on eBay and they were, I think, 10 or $15 plus like another 5 or $10 shipping, so I only spent about 20 bucks total. Um, the downside was that these were an extra large, so when I got them, they, they were huge on me. But luckily, my mother is um, an excellent seamstress, and she is always willing to help me out with costumes and stuff, so she did do some alterations in this to take them in so that they are much more uh, well-fitting than they were when I started out. So I would say probably your first 
um, option where you're going to find the most readily available uh, uh, sort of number of different possible pajama options for yourself is definitely eBay. Um, the problem is, it's kind of hard, I mean, I think I ended up, my search terms were something like men's pajamas striped white or something like that because if you word it like white stripes then they tend to be a colored pajama with white stripes versus white pajamas with colored stripes so you have to do a little finagling and, and sort of um, play around with your search terms to to come up with some white pajamas that may have you know like red and blue or orangey and blue stripes so um, like I said, the nice part about eBay is that you can generally find a pretty good, uh, close enough set for really cheap. So, um, for those of us who are on a budget or are just looking to put this together for cheap, just because, I mean, who wants to spend a ton of money on pajamas, um, eBay is probably your best bet. However, now, so obviously mine are just a close enough. So if I hold this up and we're looking at these, um, and I'm going to put up a shot here of the originals. Clearly, um, the stripes on mine are not screen accurate, but they are pretty close. I mean, they have, you know, the red stripe, obviously mine has a little blue in the center, but from far away you can't really tell. Then they have these lighter blue stripes with a decent amount of white spacing in between. So for me, this was fine, especially for 20 bucks. I, I really couldn't beat that. For those of you who want the screen accuracy, and if you are handy with a sewing machine, or if you know someone who's handy with a sewing machine and is willing to help you, there is a seller on Spoonflower who has made literally the perfect fabric compared to the original. So I'm going to put a link to their page uh, in the description box below. Um, I'm sorry I'm forgetting the, the person's username at the moment, but they do have on their uh, page for this particular fabric, they have some photos of, uh, it must be themselves or, or someone who purchased their fabric, in the pajamas made from that fabric, and it looks perfect, bang on, amazing. Um, so obviously that will be a little more expensive because you'd probably have to buy, I, I would guess, you know, um, maybe six yards or so. Uh, so if you figure at around 17 to $20 a yard, it's obviously uh, probably more money than you might want to spend on pajamas, but if you really want to go for the screen accuracy, you have that option available. So that's definitely um, uh, a good one to keep in mind. For your third option, I mean, there are always department stores, and I found just from searching um, online, it seems like L.L. Bean has a pair that is fairly close for a look-alike. I mean, there's not quite enough white spacing between the stripes, but they are the right it's a set of colors, um, and I think those were uh, about 60 or $70 total. So, I mean, granted, it's a little more expensive, but not terrible and they look okay um, and they are readily available and I'm sure that it seems like many department stores still sell men's pajama sets so you know L.L. Bean, Macy's, JCPenney, the list goes on uh, so you may get lucky and find a, a close enough set at a place like that. And your fourth option as usual is always just being thrifty. Um, I, I don't know how many pajama sets thrift stores may have for men. I mean, I haven't actually been there looking for that myself, so I'm not sure how the selection might be, but there's always the opportunity that you might just find a gem and you spend about three bucks and you're golden. So that's certainly always an option on our list. Okay, so once you've got your pajamas, um, and also I just want to quickly mention, obviously I have mine buttoned all the way to the top, which um, David Tennant did not have in his episode, and the reason I've done it here is because uh, the cut of these, um, if I leave the top button undone, it sort of folds out into what looks like little lapels, and the cut of David's pajamas was not like that. The cut of his looked more like a typical dress shirt collar, and so if I button mine all the way to the top, I get a little bit more of the correct look. So, uh, just to, for you to be aware of, of that. It's a very minor thing, I'm sure nobody would ever notice, but uh, I happened, it happened to catch my eye while I was kind of reviewing the episode and looking at it, so just, just so you're aware. Also, um, when I'm wearing this at a convention, I wouldn't be wearing a, a shirt underneath just because you 
don't do that with pajamas. Anyway, once you've got your pajamas, the next most important step is the dressing gown. Or if you're in America, we just call them robes. I don't really know why or what the difference might be, but whatever, dressing gown is up next. Okay, so, dressing gown. Um, thankfully, this piece of the costume is much easier to find uh, a close match to the original than it is for the pajamas. Um, these dressing gowns of this style are readily available in a number of places. So, um, first I'm just going to mention a few of the key things that you're going to want to look for when you're looking for yours. Um, obviously, you're going to want one that's navy blue. Um, this probably looks a little bit brighter in this super bright lighting, but it is navy. It's a, it's a very nice blue. And mine is terry cloth, which is essentially it feels kind of like a towel. Um, some places call these toweling robes uh, because basically they, they kind of help dry you off after a shower or whatever. Anyway, so navy blue. Um, I think the original dressing gown may have been fleece instead of terry cloth. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, you know, I have a couple of shots that I'll put up here of a little, um, when one was on display, so I, it may have been fleece. Uh, I don't know for sure, but either way, if you get fleece or terry cloth, um, either one has the correct texture and it will look very good in photos. So besides navy blue and fleece or terry cloth, the other thing that you really want to look for is this right here, which is called piping. Um, Basically, many dressing gowns don't have that. They may have the, the correct sort of lapel look and that sort of thing, but the piping is, is I think, kind of important because that sort of sets it apart from just the generic old dressing gown. Um, so you'll notice the one in the episode, as well as mine, has piping around the lapels as well as the cuffs. So, I think the only really difference between mine and the original is that mine has this little chest pocket. The original does not. There's no chest pocket. But for me, I didn't really care because the rest of it looks so good um, that I, I was totally fine with having that little pocket. And I, I could probably remove it if I really wanted to, but it's a very nice dressing gown, so I'm not going to mess with it. So, as you may have seen when I was holding it up, the brand of my dressing gown is Howick. And um, I found mine on eBay from a seller called Suit Saver. Um, this person had a lot of these in navy blue as well as gray, um, and maybe one other color. It might have had black or, or something like that. I don't recall off the top of my head. But um, these robes, or dressing gowns rather, are available um, originally from a store in Britain called House of Fraser. Um, the eBay seller doesn't really mention that, they just sort of say they're from a large, popular retailer and these are marked down to be cheaper, blah blah blah. Um, I did look at House of Fraser's website, and I believe these dressing gowns normally from their website were $80 or so. They were on sale at the time for around uh, 50 or 60 I don't know if they still are or not. Um, but the, I had found this on eBay and it was quite a bit cheaper. So with the international shipping and everything, I think I paid um, about $60 for this, which probably might strike you as a little strange. It might seem a little expensive for a dressing gown. But to be honest, I love this thing. Um, I, For some reason, I never really was a big dressing gown robe person. You know, I never, you know, like some people, like their, their dads or, or uh, parent, whoever, um, it's like they always put put their their robe on after a shower, and I was never that sort of person. And once I got this in the mail and I took it out and tried it on, I had sort of an epiphany, and I was like, why haven't I been using this for years? Um, because it's so comfortable, um, and especially like in the winter time, it's nice and warm. It does actually kind of help you dry off a little bit. Um, so. I would say if you're going to make an investment for this costume, pick a, a fairly nice one and spend like the 50 or 60 bucks because it's totally worth it. So anyway, getting back to the point at hand, um, this exact dressing gown is available from the House of Fraser website or you can certainly find them on eBay. Um, I believe this, I was just kind of searching for navy blue toweling robe 
or something to that effect. Uh, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, the nice part about these dressing gowns is that they are very readily available from a, a number of places. So lots of department stores have these. Um, one in particular that I found that was also very screen accurate was one from L.L. Bean, so I'll put the link to that in the description box below as well. Um, as well as L.L. Bean, if you're going to look to maybe save a couple of bucks and get one that looks it's still pretty damn good. Um, as, as usual, Amazon is always a huge uh, help. They have lots of options in both terry cloth and fleece, so really you just kind of pick what you like and uh, you'll always end up with, with something that looks great for the costume and is just great to wear around the house. So once you've got your pajamas and your dressing gown, there's only one more piece of clothing that you need to complete this outfit, which is nice considering how many things we sort of need to, to complete the normal suit and tie outfit. So as you might expect, last but not least, slippers. Now again, um, these are very readily available, very easy to find almost anywhere, um, quite inexpensive as well. Now you don't see many shots of the slippers in the episode, I mean because they don't, they're not really showing his feet all that much, but there are a few shots I'll put up here that I was able to snag, um, so you are at least able to see that they are this style of slipper that go over um, your heel in the back, they aren't the sort of, uh, I don't know what the style is called, but the ones where they just have this front part and they're just flat and open in the back, they do come up over the heel. Um, so. Uh, again, navy blue to match the dressing gown, very easy to find. The ones that I went with are Isotoner brand. I got these from Amazon, and if you just search Isotoner slipper on Amazon, you're going to find about 40 or 50 different types. So these I were called the A-Line Micro Terry slippers. So they are kind of like a micro terry cloth, so that's also nice because it matches nicely with the dressing gown. And these inside, um, these were a little bit more expensive than others. I think I paid $25 or $30 for this pair. Um, and the reason that I opted for a little bit more expensive one is um, because, forgive the dog hair, but the uh, bottoms are a nice, fairly hard rubber sole, so these will be okay to wear uh, outside, you know, like when you're walking into the convention or whatever, you're not going to be getting poked by little rocks or things that you may step on. And also on the end, you can't really see it, but on the inside there are, uh, I believe, two layers of a memory foam. So they're super, super comfortable. So like I said, I got those on Amazon. Um, you, you can find slippers really anywhere, uh, but I, I would say probably the easiest would just be to go with Amazon because you have so much to choose from. Um, the reviews are really helpful as far as sizing and things like that. Um, and if you happen to get one that's, that don't fit very well, the, the return exchange process is very simple. That being said, I will say uh, about these isotoners, the sizing was a little bit tricky for me. Um, normally, my shoe size, I mean, depending on the brand, it's sort of give or take a half a size, but typically my shoes are around a 12 and a half. Um, I'm not sure if the sizing is different uh, across the pond, but um, in American shoe sizes, I'm around a 12 and a half. Except for Converse, I'm um, a size 11, which I discussed before because those run big. Anyway, these slippers, um, the choices were either, um, I believe the, the size large, or was uh, men's size 11, 12, and then the extra large was size 13, 14. So I wasn't sure which ones to get, and I was looking at the reviews, and some people said they run small, so buy a bigger size. Other people said they run big, so buy a smaller size. So at first, I went with the size 11, 12, and they did fit, but they were snug. I mean, my big toe was kind of pushing up against the front. So I sent those back, and I got these 13, 14 ones, and they fit perfectly, and they're very, very comfortable, and I wear them all the time. So that does it for this costume variant. All you need really are three things, pajamas, dressing gown, slippers, and you're done. And so I think all in all, once this was over and done with and I, I got all these things, I, I definitely spent less than $100 on everything. So 
um, that's always kind of nice. <laughs> you know, you don't have to go crazy and spend all your savings. So obviously the only other things that you need for this costume are a Satsuma or tangerine or clementine or any other sort of small orange citrus fruit to keep in your dressing gown pocket. Um, possibly maybe an apple too if you're if you're really going for the fruit um, and I would say to always have your trusty Sonic so that if somebody says hey Arthur Dent you can just pull out your Sonic and kind of just make a face at them like no no I'm not Arthur Dent sorry so that's it for this costume variant I hope um, that you guys enjoyed this video I hope it was helpful um, if anybody has any questions about where to get things or what to look for, please feel free to leave a comment, send me a message, whatever. Um, and as always, thank you so much for watching.